complete review of a Honeywell T4 right now. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin here serving the Middle Peninsula and the northern neck of Virginia. And if you're watching this, just wanted to do a quick review of a thermostat that we, uh, we've installed quite a few of them. Um, it's not the fanciest thermostat in the, in the world, but uh, what I'm talking about is a Honeywell T4. And I just want to kind of go through a few things, maybe some tips and tricks with it kind of a uh, as you can see more of like a square look a Honeywell kind of has been going to you know kind of that look and the display is I would say not huge but not as small as some of the models that they've made in the past and um, it's not a bad looking thermostat um, I for the price point it's actually a pretty nice thermostat again this is a T4 we've also done the T6s which looks very similar, just has a little more functionality. And I'm just gonna kinda go through a few things. It does have, this particular model has the battery backup. I've already popped in the base plate on this. And the base plate on these is actually comparable to, um, instead of the, you know, the old school base plates that had the set screws that would hold the wires, this has where you would, um, you know hold it in with uh just you know pushing it up in there so um stuck in there pretty good right now but anyway so i just want to kind of go through it i just put, put the batteries in it and you can kind of see um the date flashing there and you got to input the date um i we have noticed from experience that one of the quirks with this thermostat is even with the um if the, if, the, if the thermostat is hardwired and not doesn't have battery backup, every time the power goes out or blips, um, you have to reset the date. It doesn't necessarily, if the power hasn't been out very long, it doesn't necessarily lose the programming. Uh, once you program it, we're gonna go through that in a minute, but it does lose the date for whatever reason. It's kind of a little quirk. So, you know, we've had some customers that we didn't put the batteries in it if it was hardwired. Um, with the older models, we wouldn't put the batteries in it uh, because unlike, say, like a smoke detector, um, that where the batteries would be back up, uh, with the Honeywell thermostats, if you put batteries in it, it will run off the batteries. And if the batteries get low, you have issues and things like that. So, you know, with the older Pro Series thermostats, we would leave the batteries out if it was hardwired uh, just because that was better for the customer, really. Um, you know, they wouldn't be calling us just for, you know, if they weren't having heat or AC, uh, just for a look, you know, to replace batteries. So anyway, I'm gonna kind of go through this real quick. Again, if the power goes out, you're gonna have to reset the date if you don't put the batteries in it. So since then, unfortunately, we've been having to, you know, go ahead and put the batteries in there. So that way, if uh, I don't know what it is about the uh, area in Virginia we are in, but it seems like the power does go out from time to time uh, for different reasons, obviously storms, but just sometimes it just goes out. Um, anyway, so let me kind of go through some things. Uh, it says select there, you know, so select, I've noticed when you're doing a lot of things on here, it actually means enter or, you know, at least that's what I would call it. So like, so like right now, 2016, as you can see, of course, during the making of this video, it's the year 2019. So we're gonna bring that up to 2019. And instead of it hit, you know, you don't, you don't hit enter or anything, you hit select. Okay, so let me put the date in here real quick. And once you put the date in, it will automatically bring up the right day. After that, it'll ask you 
if you want the 12 hour or 24 hour format we're gonna do the 12 hour and um the time here okay so then it asks you for the time And then it's going to go through a series of numbers. So you see it says 120 and then a big three below that. I'm not going to go through everything as far as that goes. Uh, you, it'll be in the manual here if you're having it installed by us. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously program it for you. I am going to go through a couple quick things with this. Um, one of those being, if you see on 120, it gives you a couple different options for the programming. Hopefully that is focusing better than what it looks like on my screen. But, you know, so you could do non-programmable 5-2. 5-2 would be, you know, five weekdays and then your, your weekend, your two week di uh, weekend days. And then 5-1-1 would be your five weekdays. And then a Saturday and a Sunday, different programming. And then, of course, seven day is a different program different schedule being ran for each and every day um, so that's that um, if as you cycle through you're gonna get to um, what type of system it is under 205 hopefully you can see that and if you're not sure what kind of system you have um, then you need to find out uh, because just keeping it on what it's on uh, will change things um, the reversing valve, depending on what brand it is. So if you see, this says O or B for the reversing valve. That will change based on, um, if you have a heat pump system, depending on what brand it is, it may energize in cooling, it may energize in heating. As a general rule during the making of this video, um, most brands do energize uh, in the O uh, during the cooling season. Um, but to date, the four brands that I know of off the top of my head are Ream Rude, uh, Ameristar, and Bosch. Uh, those four heat pump brands all energize in heating mode, so it'd be a B. It would energize B. Um, what else? The cycle rates, I usually don't mess with. I've never messed with it, uh, in my entire career, and I've never had an issue. If it... Um, you know, if it thinks that it should be this or that cycle based on what kind of system it is, I've, I've never messed with that. Uh, the, the factory sets that and I just leave it, leave it alone. Um, let's see, fan 230, fan controls the heat, or the heat controls the fan or the thermostat controls the fan. Um, let's see, here we go, 230. That will play, a, really depend on what kind of system you have. Um, a, a lot of heating systems will control the fan. In other words, it doesn't want you to bring the fan on right away. It, it'll blow cold if you do that. But if you don't program that correctly and your heat's running but it's not blowing the fan, that may be why. Maybe you need to turn that function on. Um, uh, number 300, system changeover. That, I did a whole video on uh, an auto changeover. Um, basically, it's a temperature range. Uh, we usually do three degrees, but just a temperature range that you can set where if it gets above it, it'll bring on the, uh, the AC. If it gets below that range, it'll bring on the heat. And, you know, here in Virginia, I'm not sure where you, if you're watching this where you're located, but in Virginia, um, there are some mild days where at night our heat comes on and during the day the AC comes on. It's just weird, weird sometimes. Um, and then you can also, if you see 303, change that, that uh, range. It says temperature dif or change over differential. Basically, that's the range. So usually we do three, but you can do all the way up to five um, on that. Uh, backup heat droop, uh, usually we set that to two. What that is, especially if you're running a heat pump, what it'll do is, it, if you see comfort is what it's normally set on. And what that means is, um, 
we fed it at two, for two because if your heat's running, it's it, you know it's during the the winter season, and you want, uh, you know, if it gets cold in there, your heat pump comes on. Well, if it's really cold in there, um, it's gonna bring on the backup heat strip. So that's what the heat droop is. Whatever you set that at, which, which like I say, we set it at two. If it gets, becomes a two degree difference between the room that you or the room temperature and what you have the heat set at, it will bring your heat strips on. Um, so it, obviously, if, if it drops below two, or you change it up above two, it will bring those heat strips on. Um, in that case, the next one is probably one of my most favorite features. I I think I did a video on this alone as well. And 350, that's your backup heat stage timer. Reason I love this is not only is it an awesome feature, and I'll kind of go through that in just a second, but at the price point that the T4 is, I mean, you're talking, you know, somewhere between you know 50 to 100 bucks, depending on which model you get. Um, but for a T4, T6. At that price point, that is such a neat feature because usually thermostats at that price point are, um, you know, base model thermostats. They don't have a lot of functionality. So let me go through that real quick. So what is the upstage timer? Upstage timer. What that is, is especially like with a heat pump, um, and so like let's just say that the scenario I just painted where you have a two degree difference between the room temperature and what you have the temperature set at. Well, with this, uh, whatever you set it at, so we usually just set it to one, which is 30 minutes there. You can see where you can increase it from that. But what it's gonna do is, for if you set it for 30 minutes, it's gonna give that heat pump 30 minutes. It's gonna give it a chance to bring the temperature up in that room before it brings on the second stage heat, which is kind of cool because, um, you know, it, it saves energy. It's gonna give that heat pump, you know, there's times where you might go, let's say you go to work and you're running a schedule and you know, you have it set to raise up to, you know, it's cool during the day and then you want the heat to kick on and, and bring it up to heat uh, that evening when you're getting home. Um, if you have that upstage timer, it's gonna give that heat pump a chance to reach that temperature before it's gonna, you know, bring on those heat strips that do draw more energy. Um, now I'm talking about backup heat strips a lot. Same goes for if you have a dual fuel system. Uh, unfortunately, the T4 doesn't do a dual fuel, but I think some of the T series, the upper models do, do do, <laughs> do do a um, dual fuel system. So that's kind of cool. Again, it goes through the, some of the cycles after that. I'm not gonna really talk about that. I don't mess with it a whole lot. I don't mess with the compressor protection. It comes, comes set for five. I think you should probably leave that alone. Uh, it makes you have to wait a little bit longer sometimes, but it does protect your compressor. There's no one offs a lot. And it's gonna go through five minutes, making it sit there before it tries to bring it on again. Uh, 425, adaptive intelligent, let's see, adaptive, adaptive intelligent recovery. And what that is, is, well, let me read it here. It says, note, adaptive intelligent recovery is a comfort setting. Heating or cooling equipment will turn on earlier, ensuring the indoor temperature will match the set point at the scheduled time. So what's cool about that is this thermostat will actually learn your home a little bit. And what that means is if you're running a schedule and you get home at five o'clock every day after work and you have it set, well, I want it to be a certain temperature at five o'clock when I get home it will learn, okay, it took me 22 minutes to reach that temperature. So it will actually turn on 22 minutes before your scheduled time. So it's at the temperature you want it to be at when you get home. Kind of cool. Um, usually leave that on. I don't usually mess with that. Um, you, you know, you can if you need to. Minimum and maximum set points after that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the factory set points are usually 50 and 90. I always change that. I usually go, Wasp just came in the truck here. I usually go 60 and 85, or you can go 65 and 85. Um, I don't see any reason why you would ever want it to be warmer than that or cooler than that in your house. Plus your system may not be designed to go 
uh, warmer or cooler than that. So that's kind of why we always do that. Keypad lockout. Uh, most, most of the folks watching this will probably leave that alone. We've turned that on in certain scenarios. Um, we did a college dorm years ago where the, the college kids kept messing with the temperature. So we, um, we had to lock the uh, keypad out um, and, and all that. What else? There's other reminders you can turn on as you move throughout the programming filters, things like that, the backlighting, whether you want it to be continuous or just turn on. Um, other than that, uh, there's a temperature offset on there. I don't usually mess with that. I have had to do that uh, once or twice before. Thank you. Um, and then finally, you know, daylight savings time, you could turn on or off. So anyway, uh, for the price point, a pretty pretty good little thermostat um, I'm not getting paid by Honeywell to do this we do a lot of Honeywell's at Griffin Air um, compared to other thermostats you know there's again there's other thermostats that are way fancier way cooler looking um, way more bells and whistles all that good stuff but for the price point uh, I don't know a lot of other thermostats that um, on the market that look as good or can do just as much. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, we'd love to earn your business. If you'd like a Honeywell T4 or one of our other thermostats we offer uh, during the making of this, uh, probably shouldn't say this because this video is not gonna be deleted and this offer will expire eventually. But during the making of this video, if you buy a Wi-Fi thermostat, one of the select models of Wi-Fi thermostats from Griffin Air, you get a free Google Home Mini. So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, that is that only runs through June 30th uh, or 31st uh, of 2019, which is uh, you know the month of making this video or month before. But anyway. Um, so if you're watching this after that, so sorry, the offer has ended. Um, yeah, so we'd love to earn your business. Got any questions? Give us a call 804-505-0247. Thank you.